In this video, I'd like to show you guys some pretty neat stuff that you can do with a common household item, scotch tape. So we've all used scotch tape for its intended purpose, but I want to show you another thing we can use scotch tape for, which is probably not its intended purpose. So if we just take two layers of scotch tape, we put one layer of scotch tape down on the table, we take a second layer of scotch tape on there, and I'm folding over a little tab uh, on the end of each side so it's easy to take up off of one another. We take these two things and smooth them down. We've got two layers of scotch tape, and all I'm going to do is take that tab and take that top layer off. So we have a piece of scotch tape, and if I bring my hand close, notice it's attracted to my hand, right? Um, we've all had experiences where you've taken clothes out of the dryer. Uh, it's like the winter time, and things kind of like cling to your arm or cling to your body. It's the same kind of thing, and we, we usually think that's like static electricity, or we call it like static cling. Well, when that happens, uh, something that's attracted to you, or kind of likes you, um, is we'd say that's a charged object. And so just by putting two layers of sticky tape down, we can make a charged object. Um, so I've got two other layers down on the table right here, and I'm going to take that first top layer off, that second top layer off. So now I have just two pieces, of, two pieces of sticky tape, which are charged objects, and we'll see what happens as I bring them close to one another, slowly. Okay, you can see that they're repelling one another a little bit. Right? There must be some force pushing each one away from the other. Now if I bring them closer, they make a larger and larger angle. Seems like that repulsive force is getting larger and larger. We call that the electrostatic force, the force between charged objects. Um, and so we can see that these two pieces of sticky tape that are charged are having an electric uh, interaction with one another. They're repelling one another. Well, um, we can use sticky tape not just to make one kind of charged object, we can use the scotch tape to make two different kind of charged objects. Uh, and the process for that is a little bit more involved, so I just want to show you that in detail so you guys can do that yourself if you guys want to make two different kinds of known charged objects. So, to make, to use this to make uh, two different kinds of charged objects, we need to use not two, but three different layers. And so let's go through it step by step. So the first thing you're going to do is make a base layer on the table. And you always want to start out with a fresh base layer. This thing's going to stay on the table. It's not going to come off. And then on top of that first layer, we're going to add two more layers. So here's the second piece of tape, and I'm going to make a tab on it again. And I'm going to put the tab on the other side now. Smooth that down nice with my finger so there's no wrinkles. And now I'm going to put a third layer of tape. Again, fold a little tab over. And we've got... I'm going to smooth that down, and now we have three layers of tape down like this. And we've got the base layer, and the second layer we're going to call that the bottom layer and the top one we're going to call the top tape. So we're going to have the bottom tape and the top tape, which are the top two layers, and they're both sitting on that base layer. Um, when we take these things off, we need to identify which is which. So I'm going to label the one on top, T, to stand for the top layer, and the next one down, we're going to label that B for the bottom layer. So once this is all smoothed down, the next step is you're going to grab the bottom layer, not the base layer, not the one all the way in the bottom, but the second layer, and you're going to rip off both top layers at the same time. So here, we now have the bottom and the top layer together, the top two layers of tape, and if I bring my hand close, notice that these two pieces of tape together are acting like a charged object. Before we go any further, we want to make this uh, act like an uncharged or neutral object. And there's two ways to do that. You can either find a piece of metal like a lab stand or your, if there's metal on your desk, you can take this and kind of like rub the, the smooth side, not the sticky side, rub the smooth side against the metal and then test it with your hand again. And you want to continue to do that until it 
doesn't get attracted to your hand. So you can see there's a little attraction. The other way to do this is take the smooth side and if you don't have a piece of metal, you can just rub it up against your upper lip. I know it looks kind of weird, but it works. So well, let's test it again. You can see that there's basically no attraction. So these two things together are now acting like an uncharged object. Well, uh, here's the last and final step. You're going to take, you're going to now separate these two. Okay. And once you've done that, you've now created actually two different types of charged objects. Remember the two charged objects that we looked at before repel one another. Let's see what happens when we bring these two charged objects close to one another. You can see that there's an attraction. So we've got the top tape, we have the bottom tape. So we can see there's definitely interactions between objects of similar charge and we've got uh, different interactions with objects of different types of charge. Well, we've got other things that we want to figure out like, well, how do charged objects and uncharged objects interact? And so we've got at least two different kinds of charged objects, the top tape and the bottom tape. And then we're going to also use and figure out um, how do, how do they interact with things like uncharged objects? So we just have um, an uncharged piece of paper and we have an uncharged piece of metal or aluminum foil. And how do we know that they're uncharged? Well, let's give it our charge test, right? So if we take our piece of paper and we slowly bring it close to our hand, we see that it's neither attracted or pushed away or repelled. We can do the same thing with our aluminum foil. Very slowly. Right, if you go too fast, you kind of get the air movement and then it's kind of hard to figure out if there's any interaction going on. So you want to always bring two things you're testing together very slowly. And we can see there's no attraction, there's no repulsion, uh, this thing is uncharged. And so the lab that we're going to do is basically going to be looking at basic interactions when we take charged objects and uncharged objects. Do they attract? Do they repel? Is there like that electrostatic force pulling things together, pushing things apart, or is there no discernible electrostatic interaction evidenced by repulsion and attraction? One last thing before you guys start your investigation, just something to be aware of, is that the humidity or the moisture in the air can actually take a charged piece of tape and slowly make it uh, uncharged and so it will not act like a charge any object anymore. It's gonna kind of mess up the results of your investigation. And so uh, if either the top tape or the bottom tape uh, is no longer attracted to you, that might mean it's just been sitting out in the air too long and you're gonna to have to remake the top tape and the bottom tape before you continue your investigation. Uh, and the last reminder is, remember you're starting with a base layer that stays on the table and you put two layers of tape on top of that to make your top and your bottom tape. Um, don't reuse base layers. Take that old layer off and put a fresh base layer that you're going to put two more layers of tape on to remake your top and your bottom tape.